How y'all doing? Dog back again. I'm back from the dead. Hooray! One word before I start this video. Um, I have new audio equipment and I'm still tweaking it to I'm still learning how to use like all this some of the new stuff I got. And I'm not exactly sure how well this is going to sound. If it like is too loud, too quiet, or just objectively just sounds like shit, uh just let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to fix it the next video, right? Okay, gotcha. So this video we're talking about type of certain. Type assertions are what allow you to go check the underlying concrete data type of a variable. You may ask, why the hell would you want to do this? Go statically typed. Um, in general, you know, like if you're working with an int or a string or a boolean or whatever. Well, Go has interfaces. And interfaces just simply describe behavior. They don't describe the actual like concrete shape of the data underlying the interface. And especially when you're working with empty interfaces, which uh, empty interface basically is Go's way of saying, I don't really care what data type this is. Um, you, you specifically may have a reason why you want to check what the underlying concrete data type is, right? So I have a simple little setup here. I have a couple of variables declared that just are string, int, and bool. And I have this function here that all it's doing is just taking in some data and it's just, just printing it. And if it returns an error, it's going to return an error, but this is just returning nil. And I have a basically a, a, a variable referencing that function, and I'm passing um, some kind of data into that function. So if we run this right now, we just do go run main, you'll just say this is my data hello world. Um, now you'll notice that this um, this function here is what's called a polymorphic function. This the 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 type of this argument is as an interface, meaning you can put different different types of data into this function and it'll do different things or maybe not do the same thing. So, for example, if instead of passing in a string, if I say I passed in my int, right, and then I go down here and rerun this. Um, without changing the code in the function, it just printed out anyway, even though I was using an entirely different uh, data type. Um, now, this is kind of a not really a practical use case. Uh, what was what more often to happen is that you're going to have, you're going to be getting data from somewhere, and maybe the return type of the, of the function that you called to get that data is the empty interface, meaning you have no clue what the underlying data type is, but you specifically do want to know what it is for sanity's sake. So for that for that end, um, I'm going to create um, a new function here, and I'll be right back after I create that function. So now I have a new function here called a search string, and what this function does is it's taking that in that data again has a um, uh, it's, it's saying it's a blank interface. It could be whatever you want it to be, and it's using this very strange syntax. It's using this syntax of a dot and then um, open and close parentheses, and then I'm actually indicating a type. So this is a type assertion. What this is doing is asking Go, the Go runtime, or Go in general, hey, this this variable, um, I want to make sure that whatever the, the concrete data underlying this variable is, is of this type. If this assertion is true, um, it will give you that underlying data type as a, a, a underlying data as a return value. So in this case, if we pass if we passed in a string and this was indeed a string, it will give us that underlying string, that underlying string value, and then we can do whatever with it. If this is wrong, so if this is like not a string, if it's an integer or some kind of random struct, this will actually cause the runtime to panic, right? So let's go up here. And instead of pointing this at run, I'm going to point this at assert string, and we're going to pass in my string. So this first time we're passing in something, this should be a string, right? Oh wait, this is uh, pointing one. Three. Stop yelling at me, Dad. Okay, so we run this since we're passing in a string. This should be fine. You'll see it says my. It, it looks very similar to run, basically. Um, however, if we go back up here, and instead of passing in um, my string, I pass in my int, you're going to see a little bit of a different result. Oh, see, now we got a runtime panic. It says panic, interface conversion, interface, empty interface is int, not string. So what this saying is, hey, the underlying concrete data of this interface is not what you expect it to be. I'm going to, I'm going to freak out. Um, now, often this is not really what you want it to do. You don't want the runtime to panic. You want to more, um, you want to gracefully handle this. 
and there is a slightly different syntax for the type assertions that allows you to basically gracefully handle when the assertion fails. And I will be right back and I will show you what that looks like. And now we have a slightly different version of this function. Um, this one's called assert string no, no pick, no panic, no panic, thank you, spelling. Um, so you notice the syntax is slightly different. Now it, it, it's the right hand side's the same with the, with the name of the variable, um, the dot notation with the parentheses surrounding the, um, uh, the name of the type. But you notice now it's returning two values. Now when you, uh, this probably looks, this, if you've been marking with maps and channels, you might kind of recognize what this is probably going to do. Rather than panicking, if this assertion fails, the second value will be uh, false. And instead of, it, it, it won't panic, it'll just return false and the zero value of the type you were trying to assert the variable as. So in the, the good outcome where this type assertion is true, this, this string variable will be the underlying string uh, data that's underlying the interface and okay will be true. Um, in the bad scenario where the data passed in was not a string, this will be the zero value for a string, so empty string, and OK will be false. And with that, we can handle more gracefully when our type assertion fails. And you will see that if the type assertion fails, I am just using um, the um, error f function from the FMT package to return a formatted error message uh, that has part of it the um, the uh, percent t verb, which will give us the the type of the variable that we pass it. And otherwise, it's going to basically just going to do the same thing as run. Um, so if we go back up here again now, and um, we point this at assert string no panic, and let's make this a string first so we can see the, the good outcome. And we go down here and we run this, you'll see, again, no problems. Uh, but now if I go back up here again and I say my int, and we run this again, now we get back an error message because we handle this gracefully, right? Because um, if this is, if this returns an error, we're doing log.fatal and just basically printing out the error. And you see in this case, we see main error, invalid type, data has type string. That's not a string, what the fuck? Oh, I have the wrong variable. I, I'm referencing the thing I was meant to be the data. There we go, let's try it again. I was like, wait, that doesn't make no sense. Okay, oh, fussy. Um, Bro, I'm all over the place. Oh wait, I changed the wrong name. Stop it. Yeah, you know, here is where I was. Missing. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. Um, invalid type data is type int because we passed in an int, but we were asserting that it's a string, right? Um, so, and just to double check with something else, if we um go down here and I say my bool, again the assertions should fail, but it will say that oh hey, this thing that you're trying to pass in is um. Is a uh, you know, and if we run this now, you'll see again it says invalid type data has type bool, but we were looking for string. Okay, um, so that's that's fundamentally what type assertions are. Um, something that's maybe not quite as known about type assertions, and I'll show you an example here. It'll be a little weird. Is you can actually assert a variable to be an interface, right? Um, which is kind of a weird, which is interesting because what it'll I don't know of a good use case for this. I've never encountered it. Um, but basically what you can do is, let's say I have my, um, I have this struct here that you saw at the top. Uh, it's called values. Um, I could, if I wanted to, even though I, I don't really get why you wouldn't just like set the argument to be, well, I, you know, I guess maybe the same reason as why, like if you're using a function that returns an empty, like the empty interface, you still want to make sure that it implements a certain interface to use it. I don't know. Um, so the, the way you would do this is if I'm going to create another function here and I'll be right back in a second. But now I have one last function here uh, called assert reader. And again, the, the, uh, we're using the same kind of method before. If you notice that this time, um, I'm not going to use the return value if, even if this assertion is true. So I'm going to like, I'm going to toss it with the underscore syntax here. Uh, but you notice that this time, interesting enough, I'm actually asserting it to be um, a, a, an interface. And you'll actually see that I've ran this code down below already. And you, uh, what I passed in was um, I have this value struct. I have this thing. I, I created this variable called my struct. That is that an instance of that value struct. 
and you'll notice that the value struct uh, does not implement io.reader. It does not have a function on there with the required method signature. And you'll see that I'm, I've, uh, I'm pointing this at assert reader now, and I'm passing in that struct. And you will see down here at the bottom, um, I've already ran this, and you will see it panicked, and the message was interface conversion uh, main.values is not io.reader, missing method read. Interesting, right? It's uh, normally the, the whole like interface checking thing is done at compile time, but if you're working with data that you may not necessarily know what shape or in this case, what behavior it has, this is a way for you to enforce that um, the data that you're working with actually uh, implements a certain interface if you need it to do. Um, there you go. Uh, so that's all I have for uh, type assertions. Uh, they tend to be a very powerful tool specifically when you're working with contexts, right? Uh, because one of the things that is a common use case with context is, with a context is to uh, attach like request or message bound data to the context. But when you do that and you want to pull the data back out, um, it's, it's a blank, it's an empty interface. You have no idea what the underlying data uh, there that you're getting is. And a lot of times you, you need it to be a specific type in order to really have, make sure your program is actually working the way it's supposed to. And you can use type assertions to do that. Actually, I'm probably gonna have another video at some point as, as a, of an example of that, because that's like such a, a fairly, like a, I've encountered a fairly common thing to do when you're working with like, uh, maybe like a, 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 like a request bound values, like, tracing IDs or like timestamps that when the request first came in that I think it kind of warrants uh, a, a, an example on its own. So I got for you today. Um, if you liked the video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below if you had any suggestions about any comments about um, how you use type assertions or maybe if you have another use case for uh, doing the type, uh, type assertions for interfaces. I haven't really found a specific use case for that myself, but uh, what the hell I know, I have my, my experience is still minuscule to everything else going on. Um, with that, uh, y'all come on back, man. I'll see you next time.